Hello, I'm Ron Wallace, Ron Rail Pitches. In cooperation with the North Jersey chapter of the NRHS, we are proud to present the fifth and last Al Kramer movie. Since producing Al Kramer movies, we've been in correspondence with several people who uh, have stated that Al was a, a real gentleman in his day. And we are happy to preserve not only Al's images of trolleys, but a memory of Al himself. Thank you. We hope you enjoy. Piedmont Northern Railway, the two divisions, the North Carolina Division and the South Carolina Division. Charlotte was the center of action for the North Carolina Division. City type trolley provided some service in Gastonia on the Piedmont Northern. Knoxville, Tennessee, a lightweight curbside car. Cincinnati, Newport, and Covington. These cars ran across the bridge into Cincinnati.
background is one of the early examples of a suspension bridge built by Roebling. Cincinnati end of the line, the cars ran into the Dixie Trolley Terminal, which was still used for many years by buses. Note that the trolley pole is off center. Originally, they ran using double overhead. Roanoke had a fleet of modern looking cars somewhat similar to a master unit. Brill's version of the master unit was called the master unit. The Osgood Bradley version was called an electromobile. Some older arch roof cars also provided service in Roanoke. Atlanta, Georgia, with some old deck roof cars, one of which went to the Bramford Trolley Museum. Here is one of the arch roof cars in the fleet.
After they were retired from service, several of Atlanta's cars were sold to Korea. Birmingham, Alabama was called the Pittsburgh of the South because it was a steel town. They also had a fleet of PCC cars which later saw service in Toronto. Some of the cars were later sold from Toronto and finished up their years in Philadelphia. Birmingham's PCC cars were built by Pullman. New Orleans had a fleet of Pearly Thomas lightweight cars. The, Pearly, the older Pearly Thomas cars for New Orleans continue in service today on the St. Charles line. The Canal Street line was discontinued in 
the 1960s, only to return again in 2005. downtown New Orleans, the Canal Street cars ran in a wide median strip. At one time there were four tracks on Canal Street downtown. This is one of the very lightweight 1000 series cars. There were only a few of them built. The French Quarter provides an interesting backdrop for the trolleys. Mississippi River featured many steamboats as well as ferries across the river. Outer end of the St. Charles line ran along a portion of Carrollton Avenue. St. Charles line runs through a neighborhood called the Garden District, famous for its mansions, very attractive looking homes.
Louisville, Kentucky. Famous for having ordered a fleet of PCC cars and then never operated them in revenue service. Cincinnati's PCC cars use double poles, just like the trolley buses. Like Pittsburgh, Cincinnati also had a series of inclines to take people up and down from the lower part of the city to the higher elevations. Several of them used uh, trolley cars as well as the cable. The trolleys boarded the cable cars for the trip up and down the incline. Again, note the double trolley poles on the roof of the car. Mount Adams was one of the most famous of Cincinnati's inclines. None of them survived today in service. Like Montreal, Cincinnati also had sightseeing trolleys. Cincinnati's Union Station is an ex excellent example of Art Deco architecture. Riverboats ply the Ohio River passing under the Roebling Bridge.
New York was not the only place with a Coney Island. Cincinnati's largest amusement park was also called Coney Island. Dayton, Ohio had several different trolley operations coming into the city. City Railway was about the largest. Columbus, Ohio had some secondhand cars from Trenton in their fleet. Wheeling also ran some lightweight curbside cars. In its heyday, Indianapolis was the center of a vast interurban network. At the very end, they ran a fleet of uh, Brill, uh, Brill Master Unit type lightweight cars built to a Peter Witt design.
Shaker Heights. They acquired a series of 25 Pullman built PCC cars, which were later supplemented by additional cars from the Twin City and St. Louis. Here is one of the original 25 PCCs for Shaker Heights, built by the Pullman Company. Shaker Square included a place where cars could be turned on a loop in the middle of the circle. The branch to Van, down Van Aken Road turns off here. Here is an articulated car running on the Cleveland Transit System. This is in front of Union Terminal at Public Square in Cleveland. Cleveland also had 25 PCC cars built by Pullman. Community Traction provided service in Toledo. Many of the cars in their fleet were very familiar, looked very much like Cleveland's cars. South Shoreline between Chicago and South Bend. Last true surviving interurban railway in the United States. Downtown South Bend, cars ran for many years down the center of the street, or later terminated at the Bendix stop on the outskirts of the city. Subsequently, they were extended to the airport in South Bend.
Frank, I'm going to relate a story. Sharon and I were riding the South Shore when the motorman said, let's see how fast it will go. And he gave me a stopwatch. When I started clocking him, he said, no, not now. Let's wait till we go downhill. I clocked him at 116.1. Electric freight was also a very important part of the South Bend's traffic, but in later years the electric freight was dieselized. The main shops for the South Shore is in Michigan City. Train pulls out of the yard here in South Bend, approaching the terminal of downtown. North Shore was another interurban railroad that served Chicago, operating between Chicago and Milwaukee. The pride of their fleet were two electroliner trains, modern air conditioning, streamlined design. And it even had a dining section where you could have an electro burger, as they call them. Yeah, the uh, North Shore regularly achieve speeds in excess of 90 miles an hour. And the high speeds were done with trolley poles. North Shore also operated local streetcars. Here's one of them. Milwaukee Electric also ran a number of interurban lines. Here is some of their equipment viewed on the streets of Milwaukee. And several articulated trains. And Milwaukee also had a fleet of city streetcars, which survived well into the 1950s. Mm -hmm. 
Milwaukee was one of the last cities to be entirely operated with older, traditional type streetcars. Downtown Milwaukee had a large interurban terminal which uh, handled the lines that went out to the suburbs surrounding Milwaukee. In later years, a lot of lightweight interurban cars were acquired for the lines, suburban lines outside of Milwaukee. Here's one that came from the Shaker Heights Rapid Transit System. The end for Milwaukee's suburban interurban trolley lines came during a fan trip when a head-on collision occurred between a lightweight car and a heavyweight car with several fatalities. The uh, insurance claims helped to bankrupt the railroad which was reorganized at that time as the speed rail system and within a year or two it went out of business entirely.
an articulated car running in the street about to make a turn. Chicago North Shore and Milwaukee repainted several of their older cars with silver and shadows to make it look like stainless steel. After the Milwaukee and urban system was truncated, a remnant of the line was acquired by the city of East Troy and was used for freight service in the area of that community. In later years, the East Troy line became a tourist trolley operation. The substation on the left serves today as a visitor center. More views on the Milwaukee suburban lines. Illinois Terminal Railway operated between St. Louis and Peoria.
Streamlined trains were introduced by the Illinois Terminal in an effort to breathe new life into the railroad and ensure its future. Instead, just the opposite occurred when the cars proved to be too wide to clear some of the tight restrictions on the approaches to Peoria and they could not deliver people to the final destination, the railroad. Passengers had to transfer to shuttle trains to get to Peoria and that helped to speed the doom of the railroad's passenger service. Trains cross the McKinley Bridge across the Mississippi River for their approach to St. Louis. Union Station, Kansas City, a very impressive structure. Kansas City had a fleet of PCC cars which were unique in that they had a post-war design with outstanding windows. Several of them were sold to Philadelphia, later to Toronto, and finally some went to Tampico, Mexico. When the system shut down, the balance of the fleet was stripped of its electrical gear and the equipment trucks were used in cars in Brussels, Belgium.
Kansas City featured many miles of attractive private right-of-way, including a portion on an elevated structure, seen in this view here. electric line that served Tulsa was the Sand Springs Railway. Another line was the Tulsa Sepulveda Union Railway. Cab forward, steam engine. Hollywood, California, served by Pacific Electric, passing in front of the famous Chinese theater. Homes of the rich and famous.
Yes, Los Angeles had a subway used by Pacific Electric trains going into the Hill Street Terminal. Pacific Electric also operated a few PCC cars. In its heyday, the Pacific Electric was the largest electric railway system in the world. to Long Beach had a four-track section of right-of-way. Two of the tracks shown in this view are now used by the Los Angeles Blue Line to Long Beach. The city system in Los Angeles used narrow gauge cars operating on a 3 foot 6 inch track gauge. The main street terminal in downtown LA was an above ground facility that had a long ramp approaching it. Here we see wide PCC cars on narrow gauge trucks. Angel's Flight Incline was dismantled and then reopened another site. Market Street San Francisco originally had four streetcar tracks. The two center ones were for the Market Street Railway and the Muni used the outside tracks. When the Market Street Railway was abandoned, 
Muni moved to their old tracks in the middle of Martin Street. San Francisco car 1040 was the last PCC car built for the United States. They were delivered in 1952. San Francisco also had double-ended cars, fleet of 10 were their original order of PCCs. Many of these cars survive today on the historic Market Street F-Line and are geared to go into service in the future on the E-Line along the Embarcadero. This is the loop of the Anjuda Line with the Pacific Ocean in the background. Cars make a U-turn in the middle of the street and lay over this attractive shelter. The Hyde Street cable car line is one of the steepest in San Francisco and provides views of Alcatraz Island in the background. Powell Street, downtown San Francisco at Union Square, with the Geary trolley line crossing the cable car tracks. PCC car on Geary Street. St. Francis Hotel. Cable car turntable at the foot of Powell Street at Market Street. California Street cars were double-ended and went into a crossover to change ends. They didn't need a turntable. The East Bay Terminal served key system trains at the end. Although originally the Sacramento Northern and Interurban electric trains also use the terminal for a very brief period. Terminal of one of the key system lines in Berkeley, California.
T-System cars look very modern with their articulated design, but they actually used trucks and electrical gear from older cars, so they really didn't have the speed and performance that one would expect from a modern car. And they sounded very much like an old car with the traction motor grind and noisy compressors. When the key system shut down and was replaced by buses of AC Transit, the upper level of the East Bay Terminal was paved for the buses and the tracks removed. X New York City elevated cars in the yard. Plus some X New York City 3rd Avenue railway cars. Key system cars ran off of third rail crossing the bridge. You'll notice this car has the pantographs down as it approaches the East Bay Terminal. The overhead wire remains in place from the days of the Sacramento Northern and Interurban Electric. Sacramento Northern survived for many years as a freight operation long after the passenger service was discontinued.